Okay, so hello everyone. Uh, so the motivation to make the nuclear war simulator was mainly because such tool didn't exist yet. And I was uh, interested in the topics of nuclear weapons since I was a child, because I grew up in Semipalatinsk, which is very close to the nuclear weapons test site in Kazakhstan, where the Soviet Union tested most of their nuclear weapons and nuclear weapons were a big part of the culture of the city and uh, growing up i was uh, playing a lot of games but there was really nothing that depicted the a nuclear conflict realistically so at some point i decided to do it myself so this is something that needs to be clear to the user that it's not a game because there is no goal predefined like there is uh, no goal like in defcon to kill as many people as possible but instead you create the goals yourself and you are free to experiment you can build uh, scenarios uh, however you like and the simulation is very detailed so the physics uh, of nuclear weapons uh, effects is realistic you have prompt radiation you have thermal radiation you have overpressure fallout a, a very detailed model for the fallout so you can experiment and you can learn about these things but there, there is no predefined goal uh, different aspects of the simulation uh, one side is the military side of it so I am trying to reproduce the dynamics of a nuclear conflict. So I'm trying to simulate the delivery systems uh, more or less uh, accurately. So you have uh, ballistic missiles, which are actually flying on ballistic trajectories and the impact time is realistic. Then you have uh, aircraft that can carry um, gravity bombs or uh, cruise missiles or even ballistic missiles like the Russian Kinjal system and you have submarines uh, and ships all kinds of systems that you would see in the world today so this part uh, represents the military side and on the other hand we have the uh, humanitarian side and there we have a uh, a uh, high resolution population density map with a resolution of uh, one kilometer or below and on this population density map we calculate the effects of nuclear weapons like overpressure thermal radiation fallout and uh, we use the models from cold war to do this as realistic as possible uh, and on one hand, you have the effects on this population density grid. So you calculate how many peoples uh, would die in such a conflict. And on the other hand, the effects are simulated on individual objects. For example, you can place yourself in the simulation. You can travel on the map. You can use uh, OpenStreetMap style uh, map. And you can travel on the map. You can take shelter in a building where, which give you, gives you protection factor from radiation. It also simulates effect on hum, humanitarian infrastructure, for example, uh, hospitals, power plants, airports, all these key objects of civilian infrastructure can be affected. And in the end, you can calculate what would be the effect on the population and civilian infrastructure after a conflict. So what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to make the simulation as easy to use as possible. So it is very open. So you can create a weapon systems your own. You can create any kind of uh, warhead or missile. But there are also there is also a database of predefined weapons from the real world that you see today. For example, uh, the Minutemen missiles uh, with their approximate yield with their range and Russian missiles with multiple warheads and also delivery systems like aircraft, submarines. So this is all available in the simulation. So you can just take it and place it on the map to use it in your scenarios. So the, sim the simulation is uh, 
not only meant to the to be used by the general public but also can be used in a professional setting for example by academia so right now there is one project uh, at princeton U university called simulating nuclear war where the nuclear war simulator is used to calculate the casualties in a scenario where united states is using uh, different arsenals to analyze different arsenal compositions and its effect on the policy. For example, what would happen if you remove the silo-based ICBMs?